across the room, he's beginning to slip up a hand. Let's just worship. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. the hand of the person to your left and grab the hand of the person to your right and let's just come into agreement this, this afternoon and I just feel the presence of the Lord so so stirred in this room and, I, and there's there's something that can happen when the presence of God begins to move in the in, in this place it begins to move into our lives so God right now God we just stand in agreement today God God that right here in your presence God a moment with you will change every other moment of our life. God, a moment today will change every other moment of the week that's coming up. God, a moment right now, God, will make every other moment, God, better. God, a moment with you right now, God, will change us. God, will change our week to come. will change our situation, God. Maybe a situation we've been stuck in, God, but a moment, God, with you right now can change that forever, God. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift your voice. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you for the presence of God. Thank you, God, for the presence that changes us, God. God, I thank you for right now, for encounters in this room, for experiences with you. Hallelujah. Let's sing Holy Spirit together one more time. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, your glory, God is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Hallelujah, come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah, thank you, God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just celebrate this presence that we feel. How many believe that we serve a living God, a, a moving God, a real God? 
Come on, if you feel the presence of the Lord, we just give him a hand clap of praise. Come on, if you feel the Lord in this room, come on, we're going to celebrate it. Alive, he's alive. Would you help us sing it? Alive, he's alive. Oh, come on, let's all, let's all declare it together. He's alive, alive, he's alive. declare he's alive. Alive, he's alive. Come, you slip up a hand this afternoon and sing it with us.
today for City Church. I thank you for the people that are watching by live stream. God, we thank you that you do miracles in our life. I thank you, God, for the people that are in this place. We lift you up in this house today. I thank you that you are the air we breathe. I thank you that when we are sick in our body that you are healer. I thank you, God, that when we need peace in our mind and we are troubled that you are peace. I thank you, God, that when we need a miracle, that you are there. I thank you, God, that you are the great I am. You are the air that we breathe, that nothing is impossible with our God today. We lift you up in this place. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. I worship you today. I thank you for who you are, and I magnify you today in this place. Begin to worship the Lord City Church. Begin to worship the Lord because when you begin to worship the Lord in this place, you're setting the person next to you free in this place. God's going to do something in your life and he's going to do something in the life of the person next to you today and the person watching the live stream today. I believe God is going to do something in your life today. God, I thank you today for touching our lives. I thank you that you have kept us and you have protected us and you have brought us into this new year because your purpose is so great for your children. I worship you in this place. Thank you for who you are. We give you praise. We give you glory and honor in this place. Praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. 
there's no one like you. Thank you that you have redeemed us. Thank you for keeping us. And we give you praise and glory. You may be seated in this place. Thank you to our worship team. Thank you, Eric, our music minister, Larry, our assistant music minister, our band. Thank you to my son, Johnny, who is back, and his bride-to-be, Natalie, who is with him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm so grateful for that, that they are back on the, from the road this week. Pastor is on the road ministering. So you can tell by looking at me, I'm not Pastor Jeff Ferguson. <laughs> we are sure. Um, he ministered in Fort Myers, Florida on Friday. What a great, powerful service they had. A great move of God they had in Fort Myers. He ministered in Naples, Florida this morning. A mighty move of God they had in Naples, Florida. So we knew when Pastor was called to start City Church in Dallas that he had been on the road ministering for 35 years. And so when he has the opportunity to continue that great work of ministry, we need to make sure that we keep him lifted up in prayer as Jeff Ferguson Ministries, Pastor Jeff Ferguson Ministries, continues that great work of ministry then. So let's keep him lifted up in prayer as he's on the road ministering. And souls are being saved. People are being filled with the Holy Ghost. Lives are being touched and transformed. And people are being healed. So put your hands together for the lives that are transformed on the road this week in Florida. God bless you, Pastor Jeff Ferguson, and we are going to continue to pray for him as he's on the road. So before we get started today on uh, ministering, um, let's go ahead, um, ushers, and let's get ready to go with our tithes and our offering ready for that. And then we're going to preach today, um, just so you know, about the love of God. I believe God, because it's Valentine's weekend, we're going to share about God's love this weekend. Are you excited about that? We're going to talk about the love of God this weekend. So instead of um, some other things that we usually share about, we're going to share about the love of God. But ushers, get ready to sow and let's get ready to give. So, um, you know, it's a great time to get ready to get your tithes and offerings together. So I want you, the worship team, to come back up. I know you just sat down for a little breather, but I just thought, you know what, instantly I thought, you know, let's go ahead and get that out of the way. I want you to get your tithes and offerings ready, get your seed ready to put in the ground. Um, it's, our tithing is a very important thing to do because the tenth is the Lord's. So let's get that ready to sow and to give. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and let's get that ready. Ushers, I see some hands raised. The tenth belongs to the Lord. So let's Make sure we are tithe payers here at City Church of Dallas. If you're watching by live stream, you can go to citychurchofdallas.peaches.com. Thank you for Peaches over there doing media. She's our church administrator. So citychurchofdallas.com. Please go on there and give. Thank you for all of you that give online. We appreciate that so much. God bless you for doing that. And so if you will get ready to sow and to give, we appreciate that. The worship team's going to sing. I better get all the way for that because I'm not a singer. God bless you.
opportunity to speak to you. I've been so honored to stand in the pulpit of Pastor Jeff Ferguson has been gone. I'm going to try to put this up a little bit too so I can hold this paper down. I've gotten the opportunity to speak to you about healing and faith and I felt like that was a lot of times my element but you know it was Valentine's weekend and so we're going to talk about the love of God this weekend. You know God is so much about love. His love covers so much. And so we're going to talk about that this weekend. Whoop. Here comes Mark. And the facts about God's love. There's nothing like the love of God. It's so overwhelming, and I have encountered it in my life. And I know you have encountered that so much, Dawn, in your life. It's so great. And the reason I can say that, well, that's tall, isn't it? <laughs> it's not going to work is that he is so big, and that's who he is. And it all starts in a scripture that we are all so familiar with, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Come on, peaches. <laughs> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world. First John is a book of great love. Did you know in First John it is mentioned 46 times in 135 verses. Love is mentioned. That was so important to God that he mentioned love that many times in that book. Shaw was awed at that. I was like, wow, that's a lot. God is love. And I'm going to start by sharing this small little testimony about how big God's love is and how much he loves us. And a small little testimony to you for me. Is that okay with you, City Church? And how detailed he is in his love for us. That I can open up a book. A lot of you are my Facebook friends that I have opened up a million times. I'm probably a million times because the book, I meant to say the book, called The Bible. And I opened it up at midnight as I was studying last night. God's love. And I opened it up last night 
and out falls the healing scriptures that my dad had given me after this aneurysm surgery, Eric. To stand on through the course of that trial. To stand on. And I have been in that B book a million times since his passing. And yet I have not been able to find no healing scriptures anywhere. Those two specific pages. But God's love is so amazing. Like, where are those scriptures? Open up that Bible last night and he fell out of that Bible. His love is so amazing. There they were. They fell onto my bed out of that Bible. God's love is mentioned 46 times in 135 verses. It's that great love of that great God that I want to address to you for a few minutes today. His love is so amazing. Let the Lord speak to our hearts today about his love. Let's consider this thought and these facts about our God's great love today. His love is unspeakable. I can't understand it. Or why. But I know one thing, City Church. We can never be separated from it. Romans 8, 38, 9. Let's read it. For I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ our Lord. It's unspeakable. We can't describe it. We can't understand it, but I know what Romans 8, Romans 8, 38, 39 just said. Nothing can separate us. No angel, nor height, nor death, no nothing to come can ever separate us from the love of God. Nothing to come ever can separate us from the love of God of my God. No principality, no power of darkness can separate me from the love of my God. It's unspeakable. I may not understand it. I may not get it. But his love is so grand for me. His love is so grand for you. Romans 8, 38 39 just wrote it out very clear for you, wrote it out very clear for each and every one of us. There's nothing, no height, no depth can separate us from the love of my God. From the love of your God can separate us from the love of our God. His love is unending. I have loved you with an everlasting love. God's love is eternal. Eternal, eternal, eternal. Jeremiah 31, 3. The Lord has appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, his, lever, ever, his loving kindness have I drawn me. An everlasting love. Unending everlasting, forever and ever and ever. His love is never ending. His love will never, ever, ever give up on you. His love will outlast you, Brooke. Nothing you will ever do can stop the love of God. It keeps on and keeps on and keeps on. I love that about my God. I love that about your God. It's forever going 
and going and going. Our God's love continues on. Everlasting? Think how long that is. Son, your love for her. Everlasting? How big is our God? As much as you can love your bride to be, your God loves you so much more. Your love, God, God's love for you is so much greater, everlasting. It's unselfish. His love is unselfish. It asks for nothing in return. However, it leads men to repent and turn to God. 1 John 4, 19, we love him because he first loved us. We love him because he first loved us. Wow. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise in this place. Thank you, Jesus. We love you because you first loved us. Wow. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> wow. So unselfish. How can you not serve a God like that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we worship you. How can you not serve a God that's so unselfish? That we just love him because he first loved us. He just loved us. Nothing in return. He expects nothing in return for me. But he just loved me first. He just loved me first, Donna. That's all he did. He just loved Angie first. Wow, I don't know of another word to say. That's probably not good pulpit etiquette. <laughs> Larry, I don't know. <laughs> What's good pulpit etiquette? Pastor may be watching. What do you say? How big is that that he just loved me first? This big, tall, no, this little bitty petite woman called Mama T. He just loved me first. He expects nothing in return from me. He is so unselfish. But just loves me in return. He expects nothing back from me. Why would I not want to serve a mighty God like that, Aretha? <laughs> Who would we not want to serve a gracious and mighty God like that? Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could I give? If I was a singer right now, I would burst out in that song. Eric, you're so lucky. <laughs> you are so lucky. <laughs> Kenny, you're so lucky you did not spend some more time with me back in that choir room. <laughs> But oh, how he loves me. So unselfish. He expects nothing in return. It's unmerited. It can't be earned or deserved. His love is based in his grace. Let me say that again. It is unmerited. If you're watching us today, his love is unmerited for you. It can't be earned or deserved. His love is based in his grace. Matthew 23, 27 cannot be earned or deserved. His love is based in his grace. Unmerited favor. 
Oh, how I love the Lord. God is so good. His love just keeps going and going and going. It doesn't matter how how many times we can fail, how many times we just can keep being Angie, (laughs) how many times, it's not based on my performance, it's not based on what I do that day, Brooke, it's not based on what am I going to do today, Shaw, how I'm going to measure that. It's not about, it's all about him. It's not about me. It's not about the kind of car I drive. It's not about my checking account, Ella. It's not about the kind of house I live in. It's not about all of that. It's all about him. Because he loved me first. Because it can't be earned and it's not deserved. His love is based in his grace. His love is unconditional. It's not based on what we can or cannot produce. We don't have to get up every day and try to produce something and try to prove something to God. It comes from the heart of man, mankind, not man or woman, mankind. It can never place how we can be loved by God. His love is unconditional. It's kind of like a parent, I guess. I'm not a parent. I'm 45. I only have one child to my left. I'm never going to produce another child. (laughs) I'm too old. So, um, right, son? (laughs) So, I mean, when it comes to parents, your love, they say your love is unconditional. So, God's love is unconditional. It's not based on our performance. It's not what we can produce. It comes from the heart of God. His love is supernatural. I know that supernatural love of God. How many know the supernatural love of God? I know the supernatural love of God. Have you known the supernatural love of God? I know that supernatural love of God. I've experienced the supernatural love of God. I think Larry just cut me off. (laughs) I'm just kidding, Larry. I love that supernatural love of God. I've experienced a supernatural love of God. He's supernatural. He's almighty. He's powerful. He's amazing. He does things incredible. He's a mighty, powerful God. I love the love of God. He does things well all the time. There's nothing that my God cannot do. His love covers amazing, incredible things. We know his love is supernatural, unconditional, unspeakable, unending, unselfish, and unmerited. So we know God's love is just absolutely incredible. Don't we know that about our God in this place today? We know that his love is forgiving, his love is redeeming, his love is compassionate, his love is healing, and he is, where is my sweet girl right there, agape love. She threw that one in today, so give her kudos for that one. He's a great God. He's an amazing God. He loves us so much and cares so much about us. So on this Valentine's weekend, If you have come through this weekend, if you have felt alone, he will be your father. I came through the weekend without a dad. He will be your father. If you've came through the weekend and you don't have a husband, mom, he can be that 
to you. If you have felt alone, he will love on you in that lonely place. Let him love on you in that lonely place. If you are sick in your body and you're fighting a physical challenge, let his love and his grace come to you in that place in your body that you are battling physically. If you are afraid, let his love come to you in that place that you are afraid. His love will be there for you. If you are battling a place in your finances, let him come to you in that place and let his love come to you in that place where you're battling your finances. His love cares about every situation that you're battling in your life. God is love. He is consumed with every detail of your life today. He cares about you. He is for you. And he is going to work it all out for your good. Let him love on your situation today. He is going to see it all work out for you today, City Church. I had the confidence for that. I believe that. Because my God is love. Jeremiah 31.3, everlasting love of God. That's why I continue to be faithful to you. I love that scripture. I want you to know today, if you're sick in your body, if you're alone, if you feel like you need God in those places of your life, and you need to fill his place in that place of that unconditional place of his love that we've been talking about today, I want you to begin to stand to your feet. God loves you. He is for you. God is going to do something in our lives. He wants to be your father. If you have felt alone, you have felt fatherless. If you're sick in your body and you need God to touch you today, If you have felt afraid, if you're needing God to move in your life, I want you to come and do yours today. So we're just going to do this in a corporate way. So we're going to open up the altars here today and let God begin to love on you today, City Church. Mom, you come. And we're just going to pray. I want you to leave here today knowing that God loves you. And that God is for you. And Eric, the worship team is going to come. Y'all just begin to sing for a minute or so. And we're going to just pour back into the people on a corporate level and bless the people of City Church. God, we thank you today. We thank you for loving on these people today. You love them unconditionally. God, I thank you, Father. You love them supernaturally. I worship you in this place today, Father.
anybody need a miracle in their body before we dismiss you today? Raise your hand before we dismiss you. Are you sick in your body? There's a person right there. Let's pray for him. Follow, follow me, somebody. We're going to pray in agreement for this gentleman here. Lord, we speak healing into your body in Jesus' name. From the very top of your head to the soles of your feet. I thank you, Lord, that you said by your stripes he is healed. In Jesus' name, I thank you that you sent your word to heal him. In Jesus' name, we speak a miracle into his body. In Jesus' name, I thank you that you died on the cross at Calvary for him. In Jesus' name, and we declare today that he is the healed of God. In Jesus' name, and I thank you for the power of agreement. God, I thank you this day that he is made whole. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, how I love you. Anybody else? Not a touch to restoration over your life in Jesus name that hope I speak hope over your life I, did, I, did, I hear the Lord saying that hope is going to be restored into your life that God is going to begin to turn things around into your life that happier days are ahead for you that you're going to begin to smile again I thank you God that you've got happy days ahead for me. In Jesus' name, I thank you, God, that you're touching her life in a special way. Surround her, God, with your presence. I ask you, God, you begin to speak to her. Give her direction in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, for the anointing on her life. I thank you, God, for touching her life in such a special new way. I ask you, God, to begin to move for her. I ask you, God, for financial doors begin to open up in her life like she has never seen in Jesus' name. Anoint her hands. Everything that her hands touch, I declare and decree, are going to prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Never dismiss the service by doing, um, let me make sure everybody here knows the Lord. That is the greatest miracle of all. We can see people healed.
We can see people filled with the Holy Ghost, but we never want to see a, a service dismissed without people giving an opportunity to come to the Lord. Every eye closed and every head bowed in this place. Please. Is there anybody in this place that does not know the Lord? Please raise your hand. We want to give an opportunity for people to come to the Lord, the greatest miracle of all. Anybody here? Raise your hand. One. Everybody repeat this prayer after me. Lord, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross. I give my life for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. You are saved. Okay. How about that? I do an easy prayer. Okay, everybody stand to your feet. I want to bless you Tuesday night to my left and to your right. See this lady over here who says, stop God. I can't read the rest, Shaw. I'm sorry. What does it say? Come up here. <laughs> she can see the rest. Oh, you can't do anything to stop God from loving you. Okay. Okay, that's better. Okay. See this lady here? This is Shaw. Tuesday night experience. She's going to be ministering at 730. Corporate prayer is at 7. Pastor Jeff Ferguson will be back on Sunday. Please do not miss her. Be here. Give this great word. You want to share what you're going to speak about, or is that just wait to see? Oh, oh, oh we're going to talk about something else too. So do not leave. I want to bless you after that. Hang on. On Saturday, March 7th, we're going to be doing a, what's a, called a treasure hunt, and it's an evangelistic outreach. It's a awesome anointed way of God where God gives us clues to direct us to the people that God wants to bless and touch their lives that day. And so put that on your calendars. 